welcome to Understanding China. This is a new occasional series that's being developed at Think Tech Hawaii, and it's rather unique in that it features people from America speaking with people in China. So across the board, from business to cultural to education to government, we'll have a series of guests who will speak about the subject of understanding China. Really, it could also be called Understanding America because this is about a clear dialogue between the, the two great countries about our uh, common interests and our common history and our common future. So today we have a very special guest uh, for our first program, and we're very thankful to Jay Fidel here at ThinkTech for helping to arrange this. We have uh, New Li, who's live from Beijing, and it's uh, morning time in Beijing and late afternoon time in Honolulu. Uh, hello, New Li. Hello, Michael. Hello, hello. welcome. Uh, New Li is the Secretary General of the International Ecotech Cooperation Committee, and that's part of the China National Committee for Pacific Economic Corp Cooperation. So it's a lot of syllables, a lot of words. It essentially means that uh, New Li is part of the effort uh, in China to reach out to the world to understand what China has to contribute and what the world has to give back to China. So we're going to en engage on a very interesting topic right now that most people in uh, America and really outside of China don't even know, but it's a very prominent topic of conversation in China today, and that is the Silk Road, the, the one, one Belt, One Road policy. We, it's really inheriting from history the, uh, the Silk Road, and we have, a, we have a map of what the Silk Road once was that we can show now. And it really shows a time in China's history when China was the eastern terminus of the largest uh, international trading network in all history. It extended all the way west through to Europe and all the way south uh, into southern Asia and north into Russia. And uh, it, it existed for over a thousand years. And they call it the Silk Road because one of the things that was chiefly traded was silk from China. But there was a lot more uh, than just silk, and there was a lot more than just trading uh, in the background of the, uh, of the Silk Road. So I wanted to ask uh, New Li if you could explain uh, this One Belt, One Road policy, where it came from, who introduced it, and when? Okay, Michael. Uh, actually, the One Bell, One Road policy, uh, the full name is One Bell and One Road Initiative. It was, it was uh, uh, raised up in year 2013 uh, on 17th of uh, September uh, when President Xi Jinping visit uh, Kazakhstan and his uh, speech in one of the university. The, the total idea for this policy is for um, as a um, following China, uh, the tradition from ancient times, you know, the Silk Road is bring, it was bring trading opportunity from China to Eastern uh, through the, uh, the path of the road from uh, uh, mainland to the north. And uh, the other way around on the uh, ocean, in the south area. So it was uh, uh, following this uh, trading path to uh, to be uh, applied in the current in the current uh, economic development as uh, China uh, leading uh, these uh, uh, countries around China to grow uh, business opportunity together. This is the, the whole concept. Right, and I think one of the 
key historic figures that we would recognize around the world uh, is Marco Polo. He was an early figure in the trade of the Silk Road and in fact helped, helped to open up and define some of those routes all the way from China all the way to Italy. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and to this day you can find in a number of cities in China, I know in Suzhou, for example, you can find squares and uh, restaurants and even sculptures of Marco Polo that, that memorialize that time. Yeah. You know, New Li, in trying to understand how China sees and thinks from inside through Chinese eyes, I've always found it very interesting to understand the Chinese characters that are used to express an idea. So when you look at the Chinese characters for one belt, one road, they break down into different parts, right? Before you get the full idea of one belt, one road. What are those parts of the Chinese characters that express the idea? They'll give us some insight, I think. Uh, from Chinese uh, point of view, um, it uh, doesn't matter of a belt and road, actually just a one line. It's a meaning of line. Uh, just uh, we can't say one belt and one belt, or one road or one road. We just uh, uh, separate it as uh, to the north, we call one belt. To the source, we call one road. But it's not uh, uh, very much difference. It's just a line there. One from uh, mainland, in the mainland. One from uh, marine line. Yeah. And part of it extends down into Africa, right? Sorry? The part of it extends down into Africa. Part of the, the southern road goes all the way down into East Africa. Uh, yes, yes. So what are the activities that we're, uh, that we're seeing um, come from the One Belt, One Road? It's been uh, practicing, they've been building it, expressing the idea, having conferences, signing trade agreements and so on for a number of years. What are the key activities that are actually taking place right now within this One Belt, One Road idea? So I apologize for the breakup there. We're, we have a live Skype connection over the internet between Honolulu and Beijing, and sometimes there's a little dropout. This is the first time we've done this actual connection. But let me repeat my question for New Lee again. Uh, New Lee, with the development of the, this One Road policy, um, what are some of the specific activities and countries Where, there, where that policy is being expressed right now? Um, because the policy for the whole idea, the whole policy, the, the, the key uh, concept is uh, peacefully development. Uh, you know, there's uh, uh, rumors Uh, for international in uh, politician say China's written China development uh, is is not is not is a misunderstanding. Uh, China de uh, China develop itself, but it should be uh, peacefully and together with uh, countries all around. Uh, The first step should be around China is like our neighbor, so developed together. The activity with uh, all those countries uh, major on cultural exchange, trading, uh, airline, uh, railway, uh, buildings, internet, yeah, those kind of activities. So it's all the old original things like trade and so on, but it's a lot of new things like e-commerce and telecommunications and so on. Yes, yes. And I just wanted to observe that for much of China's history, China was very much reaching out to the whole world and very much the center of a global trading network. And for some time then, China turned inwards and was not so much engaged with the world. 
So now, in the past 40 years, China has really started to look outward again and reassert itself as being a leader of the world across so many areas. So this one belt, one road policy is part of a continuing evolution of China's reaching out and embracing the world. Would, would you agree? Yes, I agree. Have you taken part in any of the activities that are part of this policy, any uh, cultural festivals or trade agreements or educational exchanges? Uh, for our committee, we involve uh, every year uh, APEC, APEC Summit, and uh, um, every, uh, every year, two months ahead of APEC Summit, PAC itself will host its uh, annual meeting to submit the uh, proposals for APEC submit leaders for consideration and then to sign uh, agreement in the APEC submit. But we are as a think PAC, think tank, uh, PAC as a think tank to provide proposals to APEC. Right. Yeah, of course, other other kind, kind of uh, seminars, um, um, project oriented. We involve a lot of project cooperation with overseas. And PECC, um, America is a member of PECC as well. So poss probably America is an observer at these discussions about the One Belt, One Road. One Belt, One Road is the major job for PECC. Uh, uh, think tank for the uh, research. Okay, we're bringing our friends from Beijing back on the screen here. Um, we're our internet connection. Ah, there we go. So now we have uh, a new guest. Uh, this is Lin Fan Lin, uh, the chief executive officer of Beijing Moza International Culture Development Company Limited. It's a very interesting media development and publishing group in Beijing, and they understand very well the role of the One Belt, One Road. And also uh, next to uh, Lin Fan Lin is uh, Zhou Xiaofang, who is the, uh, is the president of Asia Pacific Group in China, and she is hosting this broadcast on the China end, and she'll be translating. Uh, good day, uh, Lin Fan Lin. Very good to meet you. Hello, Bang Hong. Xiao Fang, I will ask a question, um, which was really carried over from the previous segment. Looking forward with the One Belt, One Road policy, it's really just beginning. It's only been actively pursued for three or four years. But looking forward, where do we see this going, let's say in 10 years, assuming everything is successful, what will be the extent of that road, what countries will be involved, what activities will be part of this one, self, one road policy? Thank you, Michael. 那未来的五年或者是十年 然后在这个项目里头呢，呃，我们会有很多的这个项目集和项目组合。其实如果没有“一带一路”这个这个说法的话，呃，这些项目还会再进行，只不过就是说，呃，提出了我们提出了这个“一带一路”的这个倡议，
the One Road, One Belt, it's actually a big project. Imagine a, a big project from China. And there's involving a lot of business people, uh, lots of country, which business is perfectly fit to you. So this project could be uh, in Africa, could be in Korea, could be in Middle East, it could be in Canada or America. So this is well, they're using one road, one belt to uh, to explain a whole country. It's a big project, and uh, so. Uh, Looks like we need to reestablish our connection here again for a moment. Very sorry for the technical difficulties. We'll be right back. Okay, we're determined. We're going to get down this one road. We're going to get there. <laughs> and uh, we're back now. And I wanted to ask if you could give us a specific example, Fan Lin, of the activities taking place under this new policy. Get, tell us a country and a project that you know of that's successful, that's part of the expression of this new policy by China. Uh,这个具体的例子其实有很多,但是,呃,我理解的就是说,从我这个工作的角度来说,我们更多的是在文化方面和一些国家开放合作。那么,呃,那么文化方面首先就是说,呃,就是在语言上,那么比如说我们现
。啊，是这样，就是说，呃，首先呢，呃，像呃周总理的这个这个他的这个五项和平基本原则，包括他的为人，包括他的一些呃外交原则，其实他已经是形成了一种文化。对于中国人来说，呃。呃，甚至对全世界来说吧，它可能已经形成了是一种融入到世界文化当中去了。那么其实，呃，我们现在所要做的也是，不是说我们要去呃推广我们的中国文化，或者说把我们的中国文化呃硬要呃大家这个来来来其他国家的人民来接受。我们是希望把我们的中国文化呢也融入到世界文化当中。Okay, we are close to the end of our program, and we'll try to bring our friends from Beijing back again for a moment. But I'd like to reflect on the, the, how the tides of history move uh, from China and West and through to Europe, and ultimately Europe through to America, and how that stone kept skipping across the ocean to Hawaii, and here we are at the furthest western extent of civilization, and uh, talking back to the very beginning of that link in China. It's interesting how we've come to the, uh, we've come to the, the close of a cycle of history with this uh, one belt, one road policy. And although it's initiated by China um, through all the other nations that it has alliances with, um, America is a welcome partner in the big picture of, of a one belt, one road. And we'll be exploring that theme with these organizations. I want to sincerely thank uh, Niu Li and uh, Lin Fan Lin for being our guests today two very influential organizations in China, representing hundreds and thousands of other organizations and people who are all working towards this common objective. There are many uh, aspects of this policy to explore, and that'll be one of our themes as we develop the program Understanding China. So thanks to everyone for uh, persevering through our technical difficulties here on this program, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to rejoining you again soon. Oh, headshots, okay. Headshots, yes.